Hey guys, Seth here to help you level up your fandom. This is the first video I've made in a while, so welcome back. This series in particular has been a particularly long time coming. I, uh, I want to start off by saying I'm sorry for the potato quality of the sound and probably the video in this intro. Um, part of the reason I haven't been making videos lately is I don't have a camera. So right now I'm recording this on my phone. So hopefully it's not awful. If it is, I'm sorry. Uh, this is going to be the first and probably a six part build log series where I take you through the building of this 3D printer. You can see it's quite large. Um, it's based off of the CBOT slash DBOT um, core XY 3D printer build on openbuilds.org and on Thingiverse, link in the doobly-doo. This one in particular is 406 millimeters by 406 millimeter square build plate so it's about 16 square inches and it's got about 800 millimeters of build height it's quite large um, which poses a lot of challenges which we'll get into this video is going to be primarily the framing and as we cut and build and assemble the frame of this thing all right well this series has waited quite long enough so without further ado let's jump right in So here you can see my parts list, if you want to pause it and look over all the things that I had to print and buy, um, and in what order and all of that. First step is first, start measuring. So I measured out each of these aluminum extrusions so that they matched my parts list which I assembled from the build log and build the materials and stuff. Measured out each and every singular rail so that I kept perfect track of what was being measured, what was available, and what I still had to do in preparations for cutting everything. I also did this as you can see in Silver Sharpie, so I used a quick speed square so that I could make sure that I drew the measurement lines straight across just to keep my life a little bit easier when I was cutting these. I ordered all of these aluminum extrusions from the Open Builds Parts Store. Had them just in more or less standardized lengths so that I could dimension my printer around these extrusions. So I used the length of a single extrusion, a standard length, as the overall height and I kind of scaled the rest of the printer all the way around that so that I the four vertical posts on each corner of the build was a full pre-cut length. I checked each one that I measured off of my list so that none of them got lost before I moved on to cutting. All I did was buy a aluminum cutting saw blade, put it into my miter saw and just rip all of these pieces down so that they were the right size. And then we move into assembling the frame. You gotta put on future on to keep yourself company, but if you notice, I also have the build instructions uh, up there from Spouta. The, uh, the CBOT build log is up there so that I can make sure I get all the parts in the right places in the right order. And that included the cross beam in the bottom of the frame for my interesting kinematics and Z height setup, which you'll see later.
and it was at this point that I realized just how huge this printer actually was. I moved on to the last remaining step of the frame build process. Uh, putting all of the bearings and shims and stuff into the really complex idler braces because uh, those all needed to be assembled before they were put on the frame itself and it took a, a solid hour or so to get the bearings and and shims uh, the the spacers just aligned properly so that uh, everything could be threaded all together and I could fit the screws through everything you can see I've got different flush cutters and pliers and all that stuff. I had to use most of the tools in my tool bag to kind of get these things aligned properly. So um, maybe my print tolerances weren't quite right. They were a little bit small. I had to do some filing as well just to be able to fit some things, particularly pieces onto the aluminum extrusions, as you'll see. But these were a little bit undersized, just a, a little bit, so it, it caused some issues with the spacing here as well. Uh, nothing a, a little bit of filing can't fix and some patience. But again, you just follow the instructions. Everything is really well documented on this build, which is why it's so popular. I found that I had to deviate from the instructions on occasion uh, in that the instructions say, you know, to put the washers and the two bearings in a specific order with washers on the other side, all that stuff. And I had to vary sometimes um, one washer on either side, sometimes two, sometimes no washers on either side. But I did always put a washer in between the two flanged bearings. That's really important so that those bearings can spin properly. That's the one thing that you can't skip out on. You need that washer in the middle of those two bearings. Bonus points if you can tell me which episodes of Futurama I watched while I assembled those. And then you can see me filing down the edges of the aluminum extrusions because since my prints were a little bit undersized, that made for a really tight fit on these extrusions. So I had to file everything down so that I could properly force these pieces on. So with those square nuts and the screws, I put all the screws and nuts into the holes like you can see and then that way I could properly align everything and, and slide the whole piece on without having to try to fiddle with T-nuts after the fact. Because as you can see with how many and at what angles these nuts and bolts need to go on, you can't really do it after the fact very easily. This itself wasn't very easy, but this is definitely the easiest way to assemble this that I found. Just align, rotate those square nuts so they fit down in the extrusion, and you just fit these brackets right on the top back corners of the frame. They are a large part of what stiffens up this frame so printing these at a high info percentage is absolutely vital. Takes a little bit of coercion but you can see that they do just slide right on. as long as those nuts are properly aligned. So then I just did tighten everything down on this end and slid the other two pieces in place. The 
exact same formula. It took just as long for these two pieces. Tighten everything down on those as well. And then repeat that on the other corner. And you're all set. It. Thank you guys for watching. Stick around for part two as we get into the kinematics system. And like and subscribe if you want to watch the rest of the build. Bye.